Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we're going to get our logistics hooked up here for our new computer manufacturing facility. Um, and then we also need to get the inputs, uh, the resource inputs done. i um, not sure if we'll get, get both of those things done in this episode. We'll just kind of have to see how time goes. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started from this side here. And what we're going to need to do is go up above and I think I'm gonna create some temporary scaffolding for all of this um, let's grab these catwalk stairs and put them here and just uh, whoops I guess I need to be in zoop zoopity doop and those down to here and then I think what we'll do here is we'll create a a walkway um, let's go with this here all right and then for this piece I'm just going to use these and hopefully I don't fall off. If I do, I got a jetpack. <laughs> that way you don't have to mess with trying to figure out what rails to use where. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so we need to merge these three lines together. So the first thing we want to do is let's temporarily remove that. And we'll come up here. And let's take a merger with the output going to that side. Lock that right there. Okay, we need to move it to there. And I think we need to move it one thingy that way. You can't attach mergers and splitters to the underneath side of um, a ceiling. So you have to bring them from the top down. Okay, so this one, I actually want the output to go to the right. Okay, let's move that over there and the rest of it's lined up correctly. Okay, now to take these down. They hook that stair up to the wrong edge there. These lifts need to be reset now. Listen for the little beep, and we know it's connected. Okay, let's run a mark one line out of there and confirm that it's straight and level and 90 degrees and all that good stuff. Another mark one line there. But then we're going to need to switch to mark two because these guys are all outputting... Uh, 20, a little over 20. It's 20 points two seven or something like that. So, um, so we need mark two because it's exceeds 60 per minute. Um, no, grab mark two belt and bring it out this way. And then we want to come down to here. And I th think. I think we want to be back from that seam. Maybe two. Let's just go with that. We can uh, um, we can adjust it later if we need to. Okay, does that look straight? I think so. Yeah, that's straight. Okay. So, yeah, if we need to tweak that a little bit later, we can. All right. Now, let's go... Let's 
go down this way. Excuse me. Okay, we're going to take a, a quick sidestep from the copper sheeting and let's get the silica hooked up. I have a sign there that says we need to use Mark II because we have three constructors producing silica at 27 point something or other. And, and so, of course, that's going to exceed 60 per minute as well. And we need to go into that connection up there. So let's grab a Mark II belt and we will bring it. Oh, wait a second. Okay, let's get rid of that. Yeah, that's down lower, isn't it? Okay, so we need to lift that up with a Mark II lift. And have it come out that way. Okay, good. Then we'll come to here. And then back it off by two. We'll reset that belt there. And voila, that takes care of our silica. Is it straight? It looks straight to me. Yeah, that looks good. Very good. Okay, that takes care of the silica. That was easy. That was lemon squeezy. All right, now this splitter here we need to go into. And I need to actually turn it the other direction. So let's put one down below it. Let's pick this one back up. Let's put this one above it and make sure that the input is on that direction. All right. We need to reconnect the belt, and that actually needs to be a Mark II. N uh, wait, does it? No, it doesn't. That can be just be a Mark I. But the one coming into it needs to be a Mark II. Because we have a total of like 82 point something or other copper sheeting coming into here. And then when we split off when we divide that by three it turns out to be 20 40 50 four ish i think so yeah that should support it i'll double check it again once it's all hooked up okay so now what we want to do is we want to take a mark ii lift and put that on there with the out or the input up above like so and then we need to connect a merger right in that position so let's go ahead and Pull this down. Bring this down to here. Okay, so we're Using this guy. Let's pull this up for a second. Let's grab a merger with the output going to the left. Move it over to there. And that should be lined up correctly. Yep. Okay, let's reset this Mark II lift here. Listen for the beep. We're good to go. All right. Fantastic. Now we just need to run Mark II belt to connect with it. Oh, look at that. 
It's almost as if I planned it that way. Wait a minute, though. No, that's not... That's not perfectly straight. It almost looked like it was. I think we just need to... Move this over one notch. Is that straight? I think it is. I think it is. I think it's good. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so that's feeding three of the four copper sheeting into the assembler. Now, this is our fourth one. I had to put it over here just because of spacing. So what we want to do here is we want to grab a Mark 1 lift and pull that down to where it's level with this. Um, and that, we might have to guess a little bit. I think if I remember right when I was testing this, that this is five ceiling hangers down. So let's do this. Uh, let's grab the ceiling mount. We're going to stand so we're right in the center of you. Okay, so, so we're on this seam here. Okay, just remember that. Or in the middle of this. Okay, so now let's turn it this way. And we're going to go two thingies that way. Then we're going to drop this down five, two, three, four, five. All right, now, one, two, three. See, that should be two, three, four, up. Yeah, but I think this goes ha eh. Is it going? Yeah, it goes in full increments. Okay, so that should be one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I need to move this over one more. But otherwise, I think we have that set correctly. I think. All right, let's move this over one more. Hmm. Guess I'm down one too many. right though no it looks to me like we're correct from here to here so I guess we just need to bring that lift down one more right I think that's what we need to do. Okay, so right now the lift has just barely the second marker showing. Sometimes this shit just scrambles my brain, I'll tell you what. Okay, so there's the second. It's really hard to see from this angle. I, th I think we need to go here. Yeah, because this is... Before, the second mark was just barely showing. Now it's got a lot more space. So I think that's correct. Let's find out. Hmm.
Oh, duh. I got the third mark. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Second marker, dude. Not third marker. Try that again. Okay, so... The second marker, I think, is just barely showing there. If we bring it down one more notch... No, that's not right either. Okay, let's just count. Forget the markers. So, one, two, three. Is that what we need? It is not, because it's too high. Okay, let's try four. One, two, three, four. There we go. That's what we needed to do. It's just kind of, you know, just the angles and having to look up at an angle makes this kind of a little bit tricky. All right, that should take care of that. So we have uh, 20.62, which again comes out to 80. Two something or other. 82.4. Times, um, you know, times four, right? So three of them are, are coming in through that side and one of them's coming in through this side and they're both merged right here with this merger and then feeding into the machines from here. Now, um... If we do 20.62 times 3, yeah, see, that's 61.86. Which means this line here still needs to be a mark, too. I think. No, I'm looking at this the wrong way. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back to... Let's multiply this by 4. Okay, so 82.48. No, I, I did do that right. Because we're pulling, we're pulling one of the 26 twos off that leaves 6186 left over that still has to travel down the belt. No, I'm doing it wrong again. I have to do it from what the assembler's taking in because it's dividing what I'm dividing by four is actually then being divided by three. This fucking math, man. <laughs> okay, so 8248. Divide that by three. Okay, so 2749 times 2 is less than 60. Uh, yeah, because we're because we're pulling one third of this off, so we're pulling 2749 off of 8248. That leaves 27.49 times 2, which whatever that number is, it's less than 60. So this can be a mark one belt. Okay, maths. Not my strong subject, but something you got to do if, for this game if you want to get everything right. I think we got that finished. I think we're good. Okay. So that takes care of our hookups to our circuit boards. We got the silica hooked up and we got the copper sheeting hooked up. Um, Now, let's go ahead and do our well our cable hookups are already done we just need to run those over to the manufacturer so I think we're going to want this business out of the way here yeah, I'll worry about that stuff later because we're going to be running lines along that wall there and likewise, 
bring you up to here, even though you're not on the right edge. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna run along down this way and down this way. Okay, so the screw connections into the manufacturer are the easiest ones. That's a Mark III. All we have to do for that is just Mark III straight in and voila, that's done. We still have to get stuff hooked up over here though. Um, actually, no, we don't. It's already connected. Those are our two inputs. That's coal and iron. Foundry's outputting uh, steel beams to here, inputting into the constructor. Constructor's taking the steel beams, making screws, outputting here. Yeah, that one's already done. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> I've got that finished. Okay. Now, this... What is this doing? Oh, this is our plastic connection. Right, okay. So, I think what we'll do for the plastic connection is... I gotta remember how I routed this. Oh, yeah, you know what? It, it makes sense. Where's my catwalk at? There it is. It makes sense to put the plastic into... Maybe into here. I think that makes more sense. Okay, so let's go there. Go uh, back to... The reason I did that is because then this one here, which is our cabling output. Um, I'm just trying to think of how the spacing of this is going to look. Go back to... Okay, so that gets the cabling into the manufacturer. So we got plastic, cabling, and screws in, and then we just need to get the, the circuit boards in. The output for the circuit boards is right there. Um, so let's do this one in reverse. Yeah. We'll bring it. Along here. Till it gets to... I think that's the right line. So let's go back two. Oh, I'm missing plates. All right, let me go get some plates. Okay, let's try this again. We want to bring this down to there and then back to. And I think we want to be there as well. Nope, I was on the wrong line. Okay. Oops. So we need to go That's our line there. Okay, turn it this way and then go back to this way. That should be what we're after. <laughs> Looks good. So, let's just double check everything. This is cabling going in. This is plastic going in. This is circuit boards going in. And that's screws going in. And I believe that should take care of all of the logistics. Or getting all the machines connected. We just need now to get the inputs taken care of. All right. I'm going to cut the camera here and clean up all of this scaffolding. And then I need to give a little bit of thought to exactly how I'm going to do this. To be to be honest with you, I hadn't thought too much about it. <laughs> uh, so I have to kind of figure out how I want to do that. And then when I figure that out, I'll bring you guys back and we'll get the uh, inputs hooked up. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, it took me uh, several hours, as a matter of fact, to figure all of this out. I, uh, I tend to be a little bit over optimistic sometimes when I'm estimating time 
<laughs> Sometimes like all the time. Um, anyway, so, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we need to actually underclock the water pump because um, it's not part of the blueprint. So I had to put it down separately and I forgot to underclock it. So we basically need to provide a 20.62 water per minute times four for our four copper sheet refineries. So what we're going to do is 20.62 times four is 82.48. All right, so that's what we need to underclock the water pump to. Eighty two point four eight. There we go. Okay, so that takes care of that. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna hook this up the way that I initially did it, and then I'm gonna show you a problem that I ran into and what I did to fix that problem. Um, it's just like where to begin. <laughs> There's so much to do here. Okay, so yeah, let's um let's get started over here. So we need to run this quartz. Uh, this quartz line, we need to extend it down to there. Um, and I think see right now that's on a mark two. I think I'll keep it mark two until we get down there, and then I'm just gonna downgrade it to mark one because um, we're only using 40-ish, somewhere around 40 quarts per minute in total to make the silica, uh, which we're using then to, for the circuit boards. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is, um, I'm going to take and extend you up to there. And I think what uh, this might be too steep. Yeah, maybe not. Let's see. Okay, so we'll run that to there. That to there, and then this up to there. Nope, it's not. Perfect. Okay, good. Good deal. All right, now let's come down and add one more above each one of these spots. And then we run the line all the way down to the junction. That takes care of that. Okay, now I, um, I designed a conveyor belt roadway for in the city and uh, I, I based it off of that uh, that setup over there so uh, and then of course I blueprinted it so what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our blueprints and go to the five belt city conveyor road which hold on a sec yeah, I want that to go under um, miscellaneous. Okay, so let's grab this and we're going to turn it this way and place it so these upright pieces are right in the corner. Like so. Okay, now let's tr grab a wall outlet and we'll put one up there and one up there. And then we will remove these guys. Okay, so that hooks the wires back up to that. Okay, now, I think before I extend this further, let's get things connected over here.
Okay, so what we want to do here is... Uh, we want to go into logistics and grab a conveyor pole and stick it right here. I don't know. I think, I think it needs to go here, actually. That's correct. That's going to have to be moved. <clears throat> Actually, what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to lock that and then just nudge it over. And then we'll... Oh, you know what? Um... I built these wrong. Because that's using the metallic material. Or the steel wall, rather. So we got this kind of little weird thingy going on here, but I can't do anything about that. We could even... Maybe hold that over one more. Um, okay, lock that in place and then slide it there. Yeah, that looks better. Now what we're going to do is we're going to... Get rid of that coal there, and um, I have to remember how I did this. There we go. Nice and neat. Had to finagle with it a little bit. Okay. Let's remove that and this. Because we don't want that in the middle of our road. And I did intentionally make this a Mark 1 lift in case those of you who are more astute noticed that. Uh, that is on purpose. Because we actually only need like 10 coal for this whole thing. And this belt I'm tapping into is a 120 per minute belt that I haven't used for anything yet. The other coal lines are not fully tapped out, but pretty close, so I'm just going to leave them alone. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get copper up here. So we'll put that there. And... Our copper line is right here. All right, let's do a lift there. Here, I think. And then out to back that way. Uh, one more. That looks good. Okay, let's get rid of this and this. Next, we're going to do the Caterium. have to kind of pre-mark some things. So this seam along here is even with that. Let's just uh, set that for the moment. 
And then what we want to do is turn this this way and go up to there. And then I'm going to put a splitter here. And it looks like it'll line up for me. Nice. That line was probably okay, but I'm going to rerun it anyway. Very good. Okay, now we just need to take a lift and go up. Probably to there, I'm thinking. Let's see if we can determine if that's right. Yeah, I think that's correct. Okay, good. Now all we need to do is go here and go one, two, over this way. Get that up high enough to get the belt in. Should just go right to that. Okay. That appears to be a nice 90 degree angle and it's nice and level. Remove this. Okay, so um, this iron belt right here, according to my double and triple checked calculations, should have 39 extra iron on it. We only need 31 in total for the two iron puts over there at the computer factory. So mathematically, we still we should be able to do that. Um, you know, because it, and still have um, what eight left over, eight per minute left over. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that smoothly. But I'm going to set it up this way first anyway. Um, and then we're going to have to enhance it a little bit to, to actually get it to work correctly. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you right now why it doesn't work. Um, here, hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five. I have to, I have to get the height of this right. So it looks like it needs to go up four. One, two, th three, four. I think that's correct. Let's uh, also get this part set up too. So we need you here. I think that's the correct height. <laughs> All right, so that center of that is right on the seam between the road and the concrete. So if we take you, will you give me the, I gotta make sure I have the right green line is the thing. So it's right down the center of the road here. Okay, now go back to and bring that up to there. And that looks good. Okay. Now, what I'm actually going to do here, just for the hell of it, is we're going to connect you there. 
and lift it up so that it looks like it has a support. <laughs> so here, here's the actual problem, though, that, that, that we're going to have with this. Um, because this is just a normal splitter, it's basically taking what's on this section of the belt and sending 50% off that way and 50% off this way. But what that smelter right there needs is a little more than whatever 50% is on this belt. And I'm not going to do that math. I can just tell you right off the top of my head that it's not going to work uh, based upon my testing. And so, so what happens then, of course, is that smelter over there starts to stall out. Um, so, the way that we're going to get around, uh, or we're going to fix that, is I, there's another um, hidden ore deposit um, over there, iron ore deposit. This white one right here. You can't actually see that. It's like invisible. It's really weird. But it is there, and you can put a miner on it, and you can pull iron out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull... We're going to tap into that and run it over here and merge it onto this section of the line. Now what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to still tap into at least some of this ore, because otherwise it's just wasted, but compensate you know, for the rest so that... Um, so that uh, this input going into there doesn't get messed up. You know, plus in running that over here, then we'll have it over here for future use as well. We're going to replace we're going to take out this coal section on the 120 line because we don't need it down here, and I can then use, yeah, this one here. I can then use this spot to run the new iron line in. I'm going to get a merger out. I'm going to go in that direction. I want to put it right on this corner here, but it won't let me do it by putting it on the belt. So we're going to have to do it this way. Okay, so we know it has to be on the seam there. That's good. And we just have to move it over so it matches up with that belt. Which I think is here. Yeah, that should be right. Perfect. Okay. Let's rerun this belt here. And we'll also rerun this one here. Now what we want to do is we want to... grab this uh, whoops uh, put that there and we want that to move right to there okay let's just leave that there for the moment um, okay I think this is the seam we want to be on That's the correct distance there for our 90. So yeah, this seam here is where we want to be. Okay, now uh, what I want to do is come up to there. Hmm. 
when I did this uh, earlier it snapped right to the riser but now it's not okay well we're gonna have to just eyeball this one then it's pretty damn close to being right in the center, I'd say. Now, we don't need this anymore. There we go. So yeah, again, what that will do is that will merge in, I mean, this is going to be a 270 line, but it's basically going to allow us to still use some of, of this extra ore, so it's not going to waste. And then this one will just compensate for, for the extra. And I don't think, I didn't test it long enough, but I'm pretty sure that'll allow us to keep this refinery or smelter rather up and running if it doesn't then I'll just do away with this connection and just feed the whole thing with this belt because we have plenty but I'm just trying not to waste I'm trying to use that extra you know for almost 40 39 some odd iron all right good so that's all connected um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run this belt all the way back up to where the miner is and get that hooked up i think i'll do that off camera but i'll show you the end result just to save time because this is going to be a long episode otherwise all right guys for those of you who um don't know about this um the hidden uh, the hidden ore node is like right here it's like right in this area so if we get a a miner uh, looks like I need to make a couple of portable miners first so equipment workshop there we go okay yeah so or <laughs> or iron ore rather um, let's put that in there and we'll just send the maximum 270 that the mark 3 belt can handle all right guys um, I decided to actually turn the miner around and face it towards the north uh, because getting through there was a little bit jank um, and then I had to also do a little bit of fancy footwork here to get the lifts to work correctly too I basically had to change these to one meter foundations to set the lift in so everything stayed nice and level going all the way down and then once I did that I just replaced the uh, the thicker foundations okay so this is all hooked up over here and we've got a lift going down like so and then that belt's running all the way along over to there need that guy there and now we should have plenty of iron to support our computer factory so what I'll do of course once we get it all set up is I'll run it for a while and just make sure that it's still you know we're still getting enough iron over to that smelter and if we're not then I'm just going to cut this part off and just use this to feed everything over here okay now let's uh, get up here and uh, these lights are ready to continue running down but what we're going to do is we're going to start putting our blueprint pieces in so let's go to blueprints conveyor belt city road and Back up a little bit so we can kind of see what we're doing. That looks correct from here, but let's lock it and check it. Yep, that looks good. Oh, right. I was going to, um, I wanted to change this to the metal uh, steel wall 
texture. And I'm going to have to load that in the blueprint to get that done. Okay, so now we're just going to basically run this all the way down there until we get about to the center of the computer factory, and then we'll uh, turn it 90 degrees. Okay, lock that in. We need to go that way and that way. Looks good. What I want to do, too, is I want to get right in the center and temporarily uh, color this a different color just so we know that's the center. This doesn't seem to be coming together like it did before. Move that to there. Okay, that actually needs to go there to be right in the center. I'm... Hmm, what did I do? <laughs> I don't remember. Well, that... This is right smack dab in the center of the factory which is where I want that piece to be. So maybe what I did was I just filled this little gap in manually. I don't remember doing that, but... So let's take those windows out. All right, what if we do this? What if we run like that? There, yeah, that works. Yeah, that works. Okay, good. And we can run to there and we'll we'll fix that little part later. All right, that's not going to work out quite right. I'm just like I said, I'm just a little confused as to why this isn't coming together right because when I did it on the test save, I used these blueprints. I did not change those blueprints at all. But it seems like things are off a bit. I guess we're just going to have to glitch those into there like that. I don't know what else to do. Um, I don't want to run them back to here because then that'll mess up that gap there that's supposed to be there. All right, we're just going to go with this. This is purely an aesthetic thing anyways. It's not going to change the functionality of anything. Um, right, okay. Jesus. That's going to glitch, too. Can't do anything about it. And then these center ones are intentionally glitched. Well, not intentionally. They just have to be because it doesn't fit right. The only thing I could think of is maybe I didn't... Maybe I didn't run that section right in the center, but... I want it to be because if it's a little bit offset, I don't think it'll look quite right once we get the building all finished. So if anything's going to be a little glitchy looking, I'd rather have it be this stuff out here than over there. Okay, while I'm over here and looking at this, we need to get some railing around our water pump here. One this way, boom. Okay, so the wall of our facility is going to be along here. 
So this isn't going to be the actual wall. This is just going to be here for a frame of reference. Put these down there. Yes. Yeah, again, I'm just, I'm a little corn fuzzled as to why this is turning out differently, but it's... The only thing I can think of is I must have held this back further than on center, but I thought I measured that too, but who knows? Who knows, man? All right, now we need to temporarily put this wall uh, here in order to get this to line up correctly that way. Um. Oh, right, yeah, this one's sticking out too far. Here, let's actually do this. We'll put another one right next to it and just zoopity doop that up there. Okay, that one was easy to figure out. Alrighty then, so now what needs to happen is I need to run all of the lines down this way. And everything coming down here can be Mark 1. So let's start with you and we'll see what our maximum length is. It is going to be to that section there. Whoa, uh, conveyor belt is too long. Oh, you know why? Because the conveyor pull on that one is further in. So I think we need to start here. All right, I'm back. Um, something occurred to me. These grids are off here. And I think what I must have done on the test save is I ran another section this way. And then ran those off of that. And I may have trimmed it back a little bit too. So let's go ahead and, and do it that way because it still doesn't seem to be working quite the way it's supposed to. Theoretically, we should be able to leave that there. Okay, so let's... Um, let's grab another section here and turn it like this. remove that glass there and then we want to come this way so this is right in the center uh, maybe right there that looks correct Okay, let's lock that there. Bring it back to there and take it to there. Yeah, this still this still confuses me. Because I didn't have any of this in my test. But we're just gonna, you know, we'll just cut it and work with it. I just don't understand why it's different, but there's a reason. There's always a reason. 
Just don't know what that reason is. Okay, so we'll also want to shave this section off here. do that and then I don't know if it's gonna let me bring it in yeah it will okay okay now I think that this doesn't look right here I mean it's supposed to be there but I think what I'd rather do is just manually put another section here. Yeah, that looks... I'm just going to put it in <clears throat> like that for now and then we can adjust it on the other end. that way. You two here. And then turn you that way. These, we'll put one out all the way on the end. Now let's run these out to the end. Looking good, looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the next part of this endeavor here. Um, I think what we'll do here is let's grab a couple of lifts and just keep them at their default height. And we need to run iron and copper into this forge or foundry here. So we're going to run this down to here. And this down to here. And we'll run the iron along the outside. Uh, I gotta figure out which one is... Okay, so it's on this seam here. Okay, good. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to adjust that lift there. Oh, we also... I forgot to hold it back, too. So, looks like we need to go there, I'll bet you. Correct. Okay. All right, we're going to bring this out to there and then to here on that seam and then back to up to and into there that all looks good
All right, now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to place a splitter right here with the out, uh, yeah, with the input there. And move it to there. Okay, reconnect this. Okay, that all looks right. Now, this is going to run along here, except for it's going to hit this ladder. So we're going to have to come out a ways. It will bring it out like to there. And we're going to come to... Uh, okay, hold on. Let me get up here for a minute. Okay, so we're going to go into that input way over there. So that's... Uh, that should, uh, yeah, okay, that should actually line up with this directly above us, just for as a point of reference. Okay. So let's put... I think that's... Yeah, that's right there. I'm just going to keep that there for a moment. Again, point of reference. So, now what we want to do is bring that up to there. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess 10 is the max it'll let me do that. Oh, I can't climb up there. That's perfect, actually. That's exactly what I want it to do. Okay. Get this lift and put it down here. I think. I think it needs to go there. No, it needs to be the height of that section there. That should be correct. Oh, shit. I'll bet you I got that going the wrong direction, though. Didn't check that. So let's try it again. Nope, that's actually right. Okay. That is what we want. Um, Actually, it's going to be easier... run this direction back here okay so we want to come to here back to up to and to there uh, I went over one too far
Okay, that's pretty good. It's gonna be right up, uh, almost right up against the wall. Um. But we're not gonna really be, I don't, can we glitch this in? Uh, here, do it this way. Oh, we can. I just don't like it all the way up against the wall. Like, for example, what if we want to put, like, a light up there or something? I'd rather hold it in. Okay, I think I'm gonna... Remove those two. And then that can kind of just look like it's been bolted to the side of the refinery. That's better. Okay. Let's get up here. Now we gotta bring a lift down from there. Actually, it's not gonna reach anyway, so. Um, what we'll do in that case is we'll come over here. Okay, it should be level and it should be straight. I believe it is. Can, I can. Nice. Okay. So now we're going to have to guesstimate here. Uh, I think we need to go up one. Let's see if that's right. Nope. That was correct the way it was before. All right. I'm just trying to get a frame of uh, a point of reference in my mind here. needs to go to there. Okay. Looks like we're straight and I believe we're also level. And that takes care <clears throat> of the iron feeds. It's a beautiful thing. Well, actually, the iron and the copper feeds. Okay, so now we have Caterium, Coal, and Quartz. Uh, let's do Caterium next because that's going almost... It's going right to there. If we... Drop this down to here... might go in there just perfectly. I'm going to guess that that's the right height. No. It needs to it needs to come up one. Okay, so So we need it to go up one from that marker which is kind of in the middle of the turbine there. Uh, 
can't get to the right spot from here. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that's the marker. We just need to come up one. And that should be correct. That looks good. Okay, so that gets our Katerium up there uh, for our Katerium wire. Uh, let's do the quartz next. The quartz needs to go into there. So. And we've got to bring it over from here. And we also need... Uh, I'm going to shoot the coal straight out that way. have to uh, hmm. all right let's do this let's go let's press a lift there and hold it there for the moment And then drop it down and point this one out that way and go up two. That looks like it's on the same level, I think. Okay, so let's line this up to here. Oh, wow, it's way, way off. Try that again. Okay, so that's one, two that way. Something's, something's not quite straight. And I think it's this belt. So, yeah, we just need to hold this over to there. That should be correct. good and it's also level beautiful okay so that gets our quartz done now we're gonna go up with the coal um so the coals on this seam here Got to get into that lift right there. But we can't bring the coal all the way up to the ceiling because <clears throat> there's stuff in the way. So, what we're going to do is... Let's start by just trying to think. Okay, let's go over here.
Okay, let's bring this down to the same level as that one. Oh, these floor holes are not positioned correctly. They need to go in. There we go. Okay, that fixes that. I need to try to remember to fix that in the blueprints too. Okay, good. Now, let's go over to here. And I think what we'll do is... Just notice that's clipping. So let's fix that issue. We are right here. Is it here? I think so. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that brings that to there. Oh, no, nope, we were off. Darn it. All right, so we got to... I thought that was a little close. It's all about perspective. That looks correct. Okay, so if we wrap that around... I think we're going to run into that lift A and B. We're going to actually overshoot the coal. So we might have to do this a little bit differently. We know, I believe those are 10, 10 high. So that helps us with that. Um, or a, a maximum zoop. Right, okay. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to uh, I think that's okay. Let's get our maximum zoop height here. We need to come over one this way. So that's at the right height now. So we're all, uh, working on this seam here. I wonder if I can get this all the way over here. Because I think that's where we need to to do our corner but obviously we're gonna have to hold that one in yeah I don't think that's gonna reach I think that's too far away yeah it's too far away okay so it's close but not not quite there So we can probably put another one here. Look at that. 
right between the lifts. Perfect. And it looks straight. Okay, now we just have to get... this curved. So, to do that, um, this has to go. That's correct, right? Still level and all that? Yes, it is. So we're going to have to temporarily put a lift in between these two guys if I can. If I can. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. We need to come... Yeah, that one's right. This one needs to come over... There we go. We got it. Okay, so that takes care of all of our inputs. Now, we got... I, I'm not going to finalize the outputs uh, and bring it over the storage in this episode. That's just going to take too long. And I have to kind of rethink my life anyways when it comes to that because I only have one extra bin left over there. And then... I mean, I, I think I will extend it over one more section, but we won't be able to use temporary assemblers in this spot. Of course, we'll still be able to do it over there. By the way, then I already mentioned this to you. This whole block, you know, kind of start to think of these in terms of city blocks, is going to stay open, and that's always going to be our staging area. Um, along with this area over here when we need to do, you know, temporary production lines off the storage. But there is one we are going to set up. Uh, permanently but actually yeah let's let's wait we'll do that last so for here I'm just going to store the computers in a bin because we're gonna feed the feed them directly into that manufacturer over there first before we start storing them permanently. Uh, I'm not... Uh, I don't think I'm going to worry about that clip. Yeah, I am. It's going to bug the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, okay, here, let's actually do it this way. This will be easier. Let's go up to there. And then we can just do that. Okay. Yeah, much easier. So I'm just going to store the computers in here, and then I'll run a belt over to the manufacturer. Um, you know, we have circuit boards, and what do we have in here? Oh, yeah. We have automated wiring in there. We have circuit boards in here, even though we're, we are now going to start making those permanently. I have a full bin of heavy modular frames that will run a belt over to start feeding that and then we'll start feeding the computers in. But I will probably set all of that up off camera and then just show you the, uh, the results in the next episode. Okay, so we got a couple other things we have to do too. Let's come over here. So this facility is actually producing four products in total, which is actually really cool if you think about it. 
I think it is anyway. Um, we are producing computers, we're producing circuit boards, we're producing fuel, package fuel, and we're producing empty fuel containers because we're going to have an excess of those. So let's grab some more storage here and we're going to put this storage right there. Run that into there. This is going to be our excess fuel containers. And that's because that constructor is producing 30, but this one only needs 20. Uh, but it's just the way the math worked out in order to get everything else to, to work correctly. Now, we're also going to... Um, that's our circuit boards there. So let's get another storage bin and line it up here. Run that all the way up to the ceiling to there. And we'll just let this fill up with circuit boards for now. And then, like I said, I'll, I'll route all of that stuff over to permanent storage after I figure out how I'm going to do that. For our fuel, however, we're already set up to store the fuel. Um... Because if you guys remember, quite a while ago, we set up a packaged fuel processing facility that we kind of piggybacked off of the plastic down there. And I already set it up to run down this belt and all of the smart splitters and everything are already connected to this belt for fuel. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just tap into that belt and that way we can send our package fuel right into storage. So to accomplish that, um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this here, but move it inside of there and then bring it up to there. Right, okay, and then we'll do the same thing over here. Set that down there. Move it over and zoopity doop it up. Okay, now let's come over here. Zoopity doop that up. Looks like we need to go up one more. Hopefully that's lined up correctly. Okay, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's the height that we need this lift to be. should be correct. Okay, let's get rid of this. I think we need to be here. Yeah, that's lined up with that. We need to bring this back too. Two, three, four, five. <clears throat> it's 
Does that look right? Yes, it does. Does that look right? Yes, it does. Okay, beautiful. Okay, that looks good. All right, now we're going to put this up here and go Two, three, four, five. Looking good. Okay, so now we want to take a merger and put it on this belt. Um, I'm going to have to eyeball it, though. That's about as close as that's going to get. And those are, those are correct. Beautiful. Okay, so that's just going to take our packaged fuel, put it right on this line here, and like I said, it's already set up. To store it and then throw the overflow into the sink over, over way over yonder. We did that many episodes ago now. I think we're ready to power this thing up. All right. Um Now I also want to do this. We're going to extend the road. Oh, out of concrete. Okay, let's zoop down another 10 on the road here. And... I want to see how, uh, I want to bring another big power line down this way. That's what I want to do. So I got to see what the maximum distance is here. So it'll go even beyond that. Wow. Okay. Let's do another 10. Okay, so this is the maximum section here. Let's put that in and make it concrete. And then we'll run the power line down to there. Good. All right, I'll worry about, you know, putting all the rails and all that stuff up later. I don't know how much longer we're going to be uh, on this series here because, you know, when they come out with 1.0, I'm starting over. But assuming it's going to be quite, a, you know, a long time more, I do plan on continuing to expand out that, that way at some point. So that's why I'm running this down here now. And I also want this facility to come off of a main power pole too, just kind of like what we did for the... Um, heavy modular frames. Okay, let's put that there. Now, as far as the power goes, I'm not going to be super picky about it because we will inevitably redo it once we do the building. Okay, 
so let's get right below that. Looks like that's right below that corner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to fire this thing up and see if it actually works. Here goes nothing. good that looks good that looks good this is just waiting for the heavy oil residue before it starts up making the fuel and our first fuel okay good you're getting no, that's not your input. Your input's the water and the copper. Okay, making copper sheeting. Of course, it's going to take a little while for it all to get up to 100%. I just want to make sure right now that everything's getting fed. Even if it's not, you know, even if it's stalling a little bit. Right, so our copper ingots are flowing along our little splitter scenario. Extra plastics going into here, turning into canisters. Canisters are coming out. Hey, look at that. We've got package fuel, our first little batch of package fuel. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. Looks like all three of you guys are making plastic. Well, we already checked that anyways. Um, you're making copper sheeting. You're making copper sheeting. You're not making copper sheeting. Okay. Oh, no power. That would explain it. Oh. <laughs> That's why. Oh my goodness. That's funny. It's funny that that happened. I think it's funny. All right. Let's make sure that's powered. Okay. So you just got to get your water and then you'll get started. Huzzah. All right. Everything down below seems to be working. Let's go up top side and see if everything's working correctly up there. I see green lights on all of these machines. You guys, you're not getting any copper. But these guys are because, yeah, I hear the machines welding. So there's probably a lift that's not connected right. gonna say it's that lift because I think we have silica in here right yes we do okay so it's this lift here there we go okay that's not that's not I don't think that's something I can fix in the blueprint because that's stuff we connected up with logistics so I just probably didn't connect something correctly or didn't reconnect it, but uh, we're good now. Okay, so we're getting copper sheet in there. Beautiful, beautiful. Over here, we should be making screws. You're already completely full. Okay, you're making beams and you're making screws. Hey, all right, 
we've started making computers. <laughs> Success. Okay. Whew. Man, a lot of work. And we haven't even made, the, we haven't done the architecture yet. That's just, this is just the factory part. And I still have to, uh, I still have to f figure out getting stuff over to permanent storage too. But it's working. That's the important thing. So now at this point, you know, you just let it run for a while and let everything kind of get up to 100%. And then, you know, if there's still issues after about, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour or so of letting it run, then, you know, then I just have to troubleshoot it and figure out, see if I can figure out what the deal is. Uh, but yeah, this is great. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let you go here. And um, plan for the next episode will be to... I'll get the I'll get the permanent storage thingy figured out, and I'm also um, gonna run a line from here over to the manufacturer, get those two hooked up, and get um, a connection to all of our heavy modular frames, so we can start working on making our adaptive control units. We only need 100, and once we get 100 of these made, then we'll be able to finish phase three and roll into the true end game. So there you have it. And of course, I will also, at some point in the next few episodes, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do for the actual building here, the architecture. Whew, okay, I need a break. <laughs> So I'm going to let you go here. <coughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.